Hello friends, hello and welcome to my channel Let's Learn Skada with Smuthi. Today I came with a new topic that is cyber security. Till now we have discussed lot of topics on Skada, uh, RTU, what is RTU, what is Skada, what is PLC and lot some useful tricks to use PLC and Skada softwares and RTU softwares. So today we will discuss what is cyber security because without cyber security you cannot run a Skada system because without security if you run a Skada system then anybody can come and hack your system or hack your network so your so your whole network will be under threat before going to the actual topic first we will discuss what is cyber security in general cyber security if someone trying to enter in your network or enter, enter into your device or enter into your system without your permission then it's then it will be a issue okay so to prevent that what steps you need to do and how you can stop this uh, un, means unauthorized entries or unauthorized um, logins in your system that we will discuss today. First, we will discuss types of network. There are two types of network. One is private network and this is public network. Private network when you had all your devices, SCADA system, relays, RTU, everything connected to your internal network that is a local area network that's called your private network. Means that network is not connected to outer, outer world and nobody can come directly into your network without your permission and any, nobody can enter into your network. Okay, that's called private network. Now we'll discuss what is public network. Public network when you are when your SCADA system is connected to internet and then from internet is going to your another private network. Then the mid, the between is a the, the the between in between the both the private network there is a space called your public network. So that public network is always very dangerous. Means whatever data you are sending from one place to another place through a public net, network, anybody can enter into the public network and hack your system right so we will discuss how you can prevent these public network things and private network things and before that we will discuss the type of security issues okay what type of security issues were there first is application security application security is your application level security when you can install a firewall or you can install a um, some software to prevent your system uh, from your hackers you can put some alarms and you can you can set some IP address whitelisting in this software that's called application levels. One more very general issue is your operation security. Operation security sometime you are if you are connecting to your private network from a unsecure place where uh, where you are taking a local means uh, freely available internet and you are trying to use your system there to enter into your network then you are your operation level security breaches chances are there so better to use always a, your private network if you don't have a private network then you should have a virtual private network or vpn so that may prevent your system uh, from hackers okay so if you will see one movie came in 2000 I think 99 or 2000 that Die Hard 4 if, if you saw that movie Die Hard 4 uh, the people are trying to hack a power grid system and 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 did a complete blackout in US right that that movie is that movie tells us that how uh, how people means terrorist or any wrong organization and some mischievous people how they can enter to your system and hack your system and they can do complete blackout in your area or they can stop metros they can stop power grids everything they can do that movie shows us okay from that movie we can understand that if if your system is not that much of secure then what type of risks are there in your uh, place when you are using a scada system so better to have a uh, different levels of security in your uh, in your scada system always so when we do when we do a scada system cyber security first we will ensure that the network should be private okay 
private network. If you don't have a private network and you have to use your public network to send data to one place to another place, so please use your VPNs there, virtual private networks. So that virtual private network will create a tunnel for you to send data from one place to another place. So that is the most secure place thing. Another, another uh, thing is there when you are sending data from one place to another place using public network, use encoding features like SSL2, SSL3, which level you want to do, you should encode those data to a different uh, type of encryption and send the data to other end and ask them to decrypt again when they when they want to use the data without encryption you should not send any data from one place to another place that is one more thing so generally what we do uh, in substation to secure our systems um, we do a uh, IP whitelisting when we when lot of relays and rot, when lot of relays and RTUs and SCADA system are connected to uh, one network. Uh, for example, if you say one metro is there railway railway metro where you have around hundred stations and hundred RTUs and lot of relays. Okay, uh, connected to your one network and if anybody can come into your system and try to hack your system, so better better you should whitelist all the IPs which are used. Okay, don't uh, leave any uh, unused IP freely. Better to whitelist whatever IP you need and you, which IP you don't need, just block those IPs. Okay, and port whitelisting. When you are using a switch and those switches are having some spare ports, for example, if you are using a 24 port switch and around 18 ports are used but 6 ports are then uh, free there, then those 6 ports you should block uh, again password protected the switch should be and nobody nobody should uh, uh, means unlock those I, I, uh, ports and uh, use use some uh, misuse those ports again so better to take care of that also generally what we do when we do a scada system we give some special type of alarms and indications to our master stations like if somebody try to log in your scada at you then one alarm should go if you somebody want to um, do some password change, one alarm should go. If somebody try to give wrong password uh, two, three times, then it, this message should go to the controller and this message should be taken care seriously by the controller. If somebody trying to con uh, enter to our, into our network but giving two, three times wrong um, passwords, those indications or those alarms should go to master station also. So those things you need to take care when you are de designing a cyber security in SCADA. Generally SCADA cyber security is not uh, like that much of tough, you can do very easily. It's just you have to buy a firewall before you before you are uh, before you are entering, entering into a public network, use a firewall and we always best to use a firewall because in lot of SCADA system you cannot install any outer uh, like um, uh, antivirus software and all those things generally. So better to use a firewall always when you are uh, using it uh, trying to enter into a private net uh, public network so better to use a firewall when you are uh, trying to enter into a public network so let's discuss uh, types of hacking possible okay types of hacking possible when you are having a SCADA system so generally people who want to hack your system uh, they then if they know uh, your usernames and passwords generally we give usernames like very simple like four character two character five character six character don't give your usernames or passwords like this always give a complicated username and password uh, to your RTUs and to your relays and your SCADA system specially and don't uh, disclose your password to all your uh, users there should be a user level defined should be defined like if somebody ha have to see the data only they don't they do they will not do any operation in their life ever so give them a viewer level password so that's that should be the authorization level if somebody if, some, if someone is a controller then give the give him a controller level password okay if someone is a uh, like a um, administrator he want to do some admin work then give a admin level password like he can change user and he can add user he can remove user like this okay and if you have a user who is doing engineering so just give him an engineering password username and authority level that he can do the engineering work so don't give the username and password to all the people generally don't distribute 
okay and don't write down any username and password is a wrong means uh, concept always i saw a lot of uh, tra uh, means transmission and distribution companies they're writing the username and password in their logbook and they're keeping that that in their table itself so those things should be avoided when you are having a cyber security um, means uh, compliance you have to comply in the cyber security then you have to take care of all those things so who are the threats for you okay if one someone is hacker then that is the threat for you he he trying to enter to enter into your network without your permission that is a concern for you sometime some people use pen drives and they they connect some uh, mobile devices and some personal personal hard hard drives to your scada system then if you have a private device pub means your personal device into if you connect to those connect those device into your system then sometime malware scam from some free software if you are using a free software may, maybe some malware will come into your system and those malwares will help uh, the hackers to enter into your network very easily so generally we generally we ask our users don't use any personal devices that's the and one of the most common common problem i saw that is a inside error inside error means people are by mistake they 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 used a laptop that is uh, that is means that is not white listed or having some issue uh, for example i will uh, for example i am the engineer okay i am the engineer and i will go to the site my laptop having some virus or some malware in my laptop and i will my customer will ask me please check what is the what is the problem in my relay or in my rtu in my scada so generally i will connect my laptop and i will try to check whatever the diagnosis i will do those things may uh impact to your scada system so better use your only one just dedicate one laptop for the system and use that laptop only for your scada system so then also you can save some uh you sa save your system from this type of virus malware and this type of hacking problems okay and always you pa change the password periodically because uh if one engineer coming to your uh if an engineer came to your place and he is trying to um do some diagnosis and any work and now he left the site he may he he will go to another site okay he will go to another project like this he will roam for 2 3 4 years he will roam around 100 to 200 projects and he will not remember your username and password but that username password will be there in uh, will be stored in his laptop okay and maybe that that can be misused by other person and your scada system will be compromised on that time so better to uh, change your username and password periodically minimum in uh, happily you can change the username and password of all the system and you, you just remove old old passwords and put a new password and that's that's the another uh, that, that is another ty type of means protection you can do to your scada system that is a chance you can save your system from the malware and i saw lot of people they implemented a very good thing that should be implemented in all the scada system that is local remote control authority uh, given to the scada owner who is the controller as well as the local substation guy okay if you want to use a breaker or a isolator from scada directly he will if one person will give a command from a remote place that will not work immediately because that's the remote local switch will be there that remote local switch will act there okay that that remote local switch if that local switch is in local then that will not allow the command if this local switch in remote then only it will come okay that is the one case another case for example some terrorist came to your substation and they they captured that substation okay now they want to operate that breakers and they want to do a shutdown so on that case that lo remote local switch when they will put in local they also cannot use directly the breakers okay they cannot directly operate those breakers then they have to, they need a confirmation from the uh, control room that they if they will give a local permit then only that uh, person can operate those breakers so terrorist when terrorist captured a substation then also they cannot use anything they cannot do anything with those breakers they cannot stop locally those breakers i saw lot of substations and lot of uh means scada users they do maintenance of only the physical devices not the computer or the pcs 
okay they do the maintenance they do regular maintenance of their rtu relays breakers everything but they do not uh, touch the scada system for a maintenance purpose so what happens when when you keep a lot of data like your old log files old data continuously in your scada system after some time those files may act as a virus or a malware for your system so better to check your scada system regularly periodically that these these files are removed or not whatever files you have in your scada system those scada the files are required or not if those files are not required then simply remove those files and if you want to keep those file in a, a as a backup then write a dvd and keep that in a safe place simply keep those data in a hard drive or in a cd drive if you want to use a hard drive better to use a single hard drive for a all and every purpose okay don't use uh, means your personal hard drives to save those data and if you are using a hard drive for saving your means saving your backups so use only for um, scada purpose only don't use any personal things don't keep any personal things in that hard drive okay that is one more thing you, you should remember while you want to uh, use a hard drive in your scada system so now i will tell you which signals are important uh for a scada system to monitor okay if you have a rtu which signal should be monitored okay uh, to uh, understand the cyber security uh, con problems okay so we will we, i will discuss you i will tell you now one by one just remember those alarms which are very much important uh, for a scada system first is somebody log in to your system one okay if somebody try to log in in your system then you should get a alarm or a warning okay if somebody try to change the password then also if somebody give gave wrong password then also all those things i am telling one by one just remember okay um if somebody did a download or a upload in your rtu or any download or any upload okay if the download is successful then also you should get a alarm if the download is unsuccessful then also you should get a alarm any file transfer happened in your rtu then also you should get a alarm okay so like this you can say any manual reset okay any manual reset or any power failure anything abrupt means switch off or whatever happened there those things should be recorded those things are your security uh, uh, means alarms not for any physical health and everything just physical health may be a oh, yes but those things are very much important for your cyber security part also okay any user added any new user added in your uh, login any uh, old user is removed okay that also you should get any password changed of any user then also should get a alarm that who is the user and who i he changed the password and all those things okay so those things and it, i think i should take a session also in rtu file how you should add these security signals in my next session i will uh, i will tell you how to add these security alarms in your rtu and how you can communicate those signals to your scud then that i will tell in my next session okay Uh, that that i will take in my next session and i will tell you how now i think you much clear that what is cyber security and what is the scada security okay so now you can differentiate that where i should stop and where i should work okay if you are working in a unsecure place then you should think twice that should i connect to my system or not sometime i saw a uh, lot of use scada users they gave the uh, remote permission to another engineer to check the healthiness of the system or any diagnosis uh, diagnostics they have to do those those things they given the remote logins so on that time better to check that the person is in a secure place or not if the person is in airport or in a railway station or in a public park or in a restaurant then the, you should ask him first you go to a pro proper place and take my system in remote and do the diagnosis otherwise if you will give a person remote diagnosis in a unsecure place maybe he is a good person and he he will not do any mischief and one person sitting behind him he may watching the system, uh, your system very th thoroughly and he may do any mischief if you want so those things you should take care when you are giving remote access or you are giving a uh, uh, like a remote diagnostics help and all those things so those things you have to take care while using a scada system for cyber security 
so how you like this video please let me know i did very basic in this video because i know a lot of my users are very much advanced they know a lot of things about cyber security i made this video uh, for them who want to pursue their career in scada and don't know much about cyber security so guys please subscribe my channel and hit the bell button for my next videos and if you like this video please hit the like button also thank you very much